No matter what you believe, I guarantee you've probably prayed at some point in your life. You've probably called out to somebody somewhere, somehow, with some sort of request that was on your heart. You know, Jesus taught his followers how to pray. Very unique prayer. Maybe you've heard it before. If not, I'm going to read it to you. And if you'd like to, you can read it out loud with me as I read. He taught them to pray this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. May your will be done as in heaven, so on earth. Give us today the bread we need now. It's a little request moment there. And forgive us the things we owe as we too have forgiven what was owed to us. Don't bring us into the great trial, but rescue us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I mean, it's a unique prayer because not only is Jesus teaching his followers how to pray, he's actually showing the order for those who follow Jesus, Christians, or the order in which they should desire good things in this life. So he comes out with a little bit of order. Did you catch it in the cadence of the prayer? He starts with saying we should desire the Father first, our Father. Now for some of us, that's a bit of a stretch because maybe our earthly Father or our image of that is not always a positive one. But the type of Father he's asking us to call Father, God, is someone that you can trust on, you can depend, will never leave you, never forsake you, never abandon you, and will always have their hand open to you. So he's our Father. So it's to make it personal, our connection with God. In heaven, this is where he's at. So wherever, if we want the Father and we desire to be with God, then we'll be desire to be where he's at or at least to know about it. And this is what changes those who pray this prayer. Jesus is from just the temporary and the immediate to get a vision for life beyond this life. And then holy or hallowed be your name is the Old Testament way or may your name be honored. And all this means is that God is different than us. He thinks differently. He works differently than us. It's not like our values are his values and we're to shape our values to his values, to be different. And then may your kingdom come. And the kingdom is always one of love with God. May that come here on earth as it is in heaven. May your will be done. And an acknowledgement of, and this is really the ultimate I trust you, is I'm gonna trust that you know better than me, God. So may your will be, uh, supersede my will. Then we open our hands and we say, provide for us our daily needs. And the key word there is daily, because it's not like provide for everything well into the future. It's like every day, God, I open my hands. Would you make provision for me? Forgive me and then help me to forgive others. Forgiveness in Jesus' teaching is a two-way uh, door. It swings both ways. If God is going to forgive you, open the door to it, you need to swing it and forgive others. Because if you won't open it to others, it won't be open to you. So we have an opportunity to open the door of forgiveness to both receive it and give it. And then finally, rescue us or deliver us from evil. Here's the thing. This might be the order in which Jesus taught us how to pray. It's often not the order we approach God, though. If we're honest, I think most of us, if not every human being, we don't come to God looking for a father. We come to God looking for rescue. <laughs> we're in a tough spot. It's the human condition. God, can you help us? Because we have no other recourse. So we turn to God in that moment. Then maybe if we're burdened with a guilty conscience because we've done something to hurt others or break relationships, we'll come to God often looking for forgiveness, a sense of like, how do I pay for this forgiveness? We want to earn it somehow from God. And then if we get further, it might be because we have needs needs that are beyond our ability to meet. And so we'll come to God and we'll say, God, would you provide this? If you just give me this job, I'll follow you. And we have all kinds of negotiating tactics with God. And here's the interesting thing. If God does these three things, then maybe, just maybe then, we'll come to a point where we say, okay, your kingdom come, God. Okay, your will over my will. But but we'll be there'll be a little caveat, but not all of it, God. You can have this part of my life, but you can't touch this part of my life. That's my work part or whatever it is. And we have holdouts because we'll always hold out from God and our relationship with him if the order is reversed. It's okay to start this way, but God taught us to order our desires this way. And there's a trickle down effect that happens to it. When we want God first before all these other things, all of a sudden it will inform every other part of your life and bring health to every part of your life. Jesus put it another way in the Gospels. He said, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. In other words, put me first. 
put God first in your life. Let your desires be informed by your love for God, and it'll change everything.